Steam recently unveiled a new game capture feature built right into the Steam overlay, and it got me thinking, what is the best way to record gameplay? I've decided to conduct some unscientific experiments to find out using several of the most popular free options out there. We'll be using Rise Son of Rome for these tests, Crytek's bombastic hack and slash romp from 2013. I don't know, I guess watching Gladiator 2 put me in the mood for something Roman? And something with a similar disregard for historical accuracy. Importantly for us though, Rise was originally an Xbox One exclusive, designed to show off both CryEngine and the grunt of the X-Bone. So it's still a very pretty game to look at to this day. My initial tests started pretty informal, but over the course of a weekend, I gradually adjusted settings and bit rates until, finally, I recorded a small clip using four recorders simultaneously. So who are the challengers? First up, there's GameBar, Windows built-in game capture software. The UI is a little confusing, with settings hidden in Windows rather than GameBar itself, and it offers minimal control, with just two choices of quality, but no info on what these actually mean. The current version can also only record up to 1080p. It can passively record play sessions and save clips of up to 10 minutes of prior gameplay at the touch of a hotkey. Sadly, although you can record your mic and game audio, GameBar mixes them together into a single stereo mix, meaning you can't tweak the levels afterwards. Next, my old faithful, OBS. OBS is technically live streaming software, but it has a pretty nifty and lightweight screen recorder built in, with a boatload of configurable parameters and features. It can be a little overwhelming to newbies and requires some setup, but it does allow you to record up to six separate audio channels. OBS can be configured to record passively and save clips at the touch of a hotkey, but it's on the user to set all this up as it's not enabled by default. A recent update to OBS also apparently allows users to add chapter markers to longer recordings to help with editing later, although in practice I couldn't get this to work on Premiere or Vegas. Regardless, you'll need to be familiar with video editing software to review longer clips and chop them into smaller clips after the fact. This is where Steam's game capture is, in my opinion, the most user-friendly. It passively records your play session, and not only can you save clips in the moment using hotkeys, once you've finished playing, you can review your entire play session on a timeline and use in and out points to highlight clips to save or export. You have some control over bit rates, but not as much as with OBS or Nvidia Overlay. Interestingly, Steam gives you the option to export in either H.264 or H.265, the latter being a newer, more efficient codec. At high bit rates, you'll barely notice a difference in quality, but if you choose to export at a lower bit rate, H.265 should theoretically hold up better. Like GameBar, Steam can record mic and game sounds, but it mixes them together into a single stereo mix. Lastly, we'll be looking at Nvidia Overlay, that annoying green bar that appears every time you try to play a game. It can record 4K gameplay at up to 120 FPS and 8K at 30 FPS, though it's limited to 150 megabits per second. Its instant replay feature lets you capture up to 20 minutes prior gameplay. And similar to OBS, you get the option to record gameplay and your microphone to separate audio channels, giving you greater flexibility in post-production. With my settings matched as best as I could, I tried to record a small clip of gameplay using GameBar, OBS, Steam and Nvidia simultaneously. GameBar and OBS did not like this at all, and dropped a lot of frames, though admittedly the average user isn't likely to be running multiple capture methods at once. Then in Premiere, I synced up the clips and looked for a frame to compare each of the capture methods, exporting frames as bitmaps to avoid additional compression artefacts. Then it was time for some good old-fashioned pixel peeping. Okay, so now let's compare some screenshots from the different capture methods I tried. So starting with Game Bar, obviously we know it's a 1080p video and it's been uh, upscaled to 2K, so yeah, it doesn't look very good. We're losing a lot of detail, so we can pretty much disregard this one right off the bat. Um, if we jump up to OBS, we can suddenly see a lot more detail pops in, got a lot more detail around the helmet. I mean, Game Bar, very blurry, very compressed, random blocks of color coming in here, like a bit of purple seeping into that bit of armor there. As soon as we go to OBS, we see that that disappears. Even though this is like our characters running and moving and there's a bit of motion blur here, we can immediately see that everything gets a lot sharper. There's a lot more contrast. 
You can start to see a little bit of texture on this sort of leather strap that he's got going over his back. But now let's look at the Steam export. So this is the H.264 export for this uh, same clip. And the first thing I noticed was there's a weird green tint. Um, if we're taking a look at the OBS kind of export, that's what that color pixel is. It's a sort of a, well, it's a gray. But if we go back to that same pixel and take a look at it in the H.264 export, so you can clearly see this is supposed to be the same color, but there's definitely a difference between the gray that's in the OBS and the, well, gray green that's in the Steam one. It's also in the H.265 one as well. Obviously, the detail changes slightly. It's encoding it in a different way, but there's still that green cast there. And I really don't know why that is. The NVIDIA one doesn't have it. It goes back to being a pretty normal color. The other thing I was going to look at was uh, text. As you can imagine, game bar, obviously it's a 1080p export. So it looks pretty rubbish because it's having to be upscaled uh, in order to be accurately compared. It may look better if you're on a 1080p setup and you're kind of comparing these other ones, but I have a bit of a suspicion that the bitrate is so low that it, it won't be trumped by any of, the, any of these others. So um, OBS, let's take a look at OBS. And yeah, everything's very sharp. This logo is very sharp. I couldn't say that there was any kind of um, artifacting around the edge of it um, or around the edge of the text. Uh, Steam, obviously, um, it's a bit blockier. There's a little bit more compression seeping in. You're starting to see little bits of artifacting around this logo. So this is the H.264 export. And actually, that green tint, you can even kind of, if you look at the white of this logo, you can see it kind of just goes a little bit green on the Steam exports um, on both of them. Although it's a bit more noticeable on the H.264 than the H.265. Um, so let's look at NVIDIA. So NVIDIA also has a little bit of a kind of a blocky compression pattern going on here. Um, and I don't know whether that's video compression or whether it's some kind of sharpening filter. I have a sneaky suspicion that there is some kind of sharpening filter that's being applied to um, the footage on the NVIDIA. Very subtle, um, but I think that's the reason why the contrast goes up, like on the shadow between this character and, uh, and the shadow. So if I look at the OBS export, I think there's more contrast and it's slightly blockier um, in the NVIDIA one than in the OBS one. So that's OBS, that's NVIDIA. OBS, NVIDIA. This is a game that has motion blur in it. So this is a sword on top of a barrel. If we take a look at it in game bar, obviously very compressed, very little definition. Um, the OBS version is a lot smoother. You can actually start to see like a smooth gradation between like the highlight on the top of the sword and the shadow underneath it. When we look at the Steam export, obviously this is H.264 to start with, so you can start to see like little blocks of pixels being grouped together, little little bits of compression. The H.265 export is smoother, and you'd expect that. It's a newer codec, it's a more efficient codec, um, so you're you're not noticing those kind of chunks anymore. Unfortunately, with Nvidia, they come back. So again, I don't know whether this is a compression thing or whether it's some sort of sharpening filter. Like you can see colors being banded together in these little kind of like stripes here. In my end, so you can see that. So we've got these stripes of color on the NVIDIA and then uh, it's a lot more kind of blocky and, and dithered on the uh, OBS one. But if you look at the kind of the, I don't know what this would be, bronze or whatever, of the straps of his armor, OBS shows this as quite like a, um, saturated orange color whereas Nvidia that color is all kind of washed out um, so and actually we're losing a lot of the detail here as well so this is where that sharpening filter is kind of or whatever it is contrast or whatever is sort of falling apart because it's not able to pick up on like a per pixel level individual bits of contrast. If I was scoring each of these capture methods OBS would get a 5 for visual quality purely because it offers so much variety. Nvidia overlay is a close second. Steam's weird green cast relegates it to third place, but it does offer efficient H.265 compression. Game Bar should get a point for coming last, but the lack of bitrate options and max 1080p resolution means it loses that point altogether. In terms of audio options, OBS is once again the standout, with up to six tracks of audio recording. Nvidia does well by allowing separate game audio and mic tracks. Steam and Game Bar lag behind, by forcing everything into a stereo mix that you can't control afterwards. When it comes to clipping, Steam is peerless. 
The ability to not only clip in the moment, but also after the fact, is brilliant. Especially when paired with its easy to understand interface. Nvidia does okay here too, by supporting up to 20 minute clips in the moment. Gamebar will also let you save up to 10 minutes at the touch of a button. OBS gets two points here because although it does support saving clips from its replay buffer, it's on the user to set this up and map it to a hotkey. Ease of use is subjective, but for me, Steam's new game capture suite leads the way here. Nvidia Overlay is also pretty intuitive. Gamebar loses points here by having settings buried in Windows instead of in-app, and OBS brings up the rear with a complex UI that could frighten the inexperienced. It quickly redeems itself though with its streaming capabilities. That is, after all, its whole reason for existing. Interestingly, Nvidia used to have streaming features built in, but they seem to have walled those off now in their new broadcast app. And who wants to install that? Steam gets a point here for allowing easy sharing of clips. Gamebar is, well, Gamebar. Looking at the totals, OBS just about wins out, but in reality, it depends what type of gamer you are. Each of these methods has their pros and cons. Gamebar videos, whilst not great quality, will take up the least space. OBS offers the most flexibility, but you need to do some setup yourself and be familiar with video editing software to get the most out of it. Steam is certainly the most intuitive and will probably work best for most gamers due to being built right into Steam Overlay. It's just a shame about that weird green cast on everything, and the limited audio options. Nvidia occupies a nice middle ground, offering higher visual quality and more audio control than Steam, but lacking the post-session clipping features. Were Nvidia to roll out a timeline review feature like Steam Overlay, and it would become my de facto screen recorder, if for no other reason than it will work on non-Steam games too, and even on desktop. But what about you? Which screen recording method do you use, and why? Let me know in the comments, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching.